Cheap clothes copied from the catwalk and put on sale within weeks. Fast fashion has transformed the way we shop and dress, but it has come at a huge cost to the environment. So, is it time to put the brakes on fast fashion? Welcome to Roundtable. Hello there, welcome to the programme. I'm Shuli Ghosh. Cheap clothes bought in shops or online to be worn a few times at most and then thrown away. No wonder fast fashion is one of the planet's top 10 polluting industries. The influence of fast fashion spans continents, from the high street to online shops to social media. Fashion shoppers spent about $4.5 billion on Christmas party clothing last year, with 8 million items making their way to landfill after just one wear. The term fast fashion is used to describe the accelerated process of turning new design ideas into clothes. This rapid turnover means retailers can create new trends quicker than ever before. But the convenience of cheap clothing has come at a cost to the environment. The fast fashion industry is now the eighth most polluting industry in the world in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, according to our changing climate. According to Oco Techs Association, 60% of millennials say they want to shop sustainably, but only 37% actually buy sustainable clothing. Will the next generation take the lead in tackling fast fashion? And is ethical fashion an affordable solution? Well, let's introduce our guest today. Joining us on Roundtable is Shazia Salim, fashion designer and owner of an ethical fashion shop in London. Jasmine Jonas, who is a fashion influencer. Demetrius Sivrikos, professor of business psychology at University College London. And Patsy Perry, senior lecturer in fashion marketing at Manchester University. Good to have you all with me. Thank you for joining Roundtable. Let's talk about the environmental impact of fast fashion. Shazia, you're an experienced fashion designer. I know you're into your ethical designs. What is the problem with fast fashion? The problem really is that fast fashion is, the fashion industry in general is said to be one of the most polluting industries in the world. So it's supposed to be more polluting than aviation and shipping combined, which is really quite something because usually they're the ones that get the bad rep for pollution. So what are we talking about? Is it toxic dyes? Is it the way cotton's grown? It's through the entire value chain, actually. So um, on the one hand, you've got the environmental impact of natural fibres, but you've also got the environmental, environmental impact of uh, man-made fibres, synthetics. But ultimately, because we wear neither in its natural shade, so all fabrics tend to get dyed. Um, you can reduce the impact of harmful chemicals, but in the end, you know, you're still polluting waterways. And uh, you know, so from the resources that cotton needs, you know, uh, cotton is said to need like over 5,000 litres of water. There's a lot of water and a lot of pesticides, yes, exactly, doesn't it? Exactly, so it's quite resource heavy and often uh, it's grown in countries that are developing and struggling for resources in any case. And then uh, the more fast fashion increases and becomes more and more popular, the more impact it has on the country of origin. Patsy, do your students learn about the environmental impact uh, of fashion? Yeah, we look at the social and the environmental impact of fashion across the whole value chain. So like Shazia is saying, all the way from the agricultural phase where we're talking about water, pesticides and so on in developing countries, but also the social impact of those harmful chemicals that then leach out into fields, go into communities, into waterways and then cause things like birth defects and so on in local communities. Then we but look that, that's at, quite um, surprising that, that there is that amount of impact in just a piece of clothing that, that we're wearing. Do you think people are, are aware of that? I don't think they're aware at all <clears throat> because it's so far removed from you know, the average person's life in, um, in an urban context. So um, we don't really have much production in our country anymore, so we don't really see the impacts of it. I mean, we are seeing the impacts of waste now, but in terms of the actual production of fibres and fabrics, all of that is very far removed from the average person. So, Jasmine, you're an influencer. Tell us what an influencer does. I think in layman's terms, it's a new kind of way of, of advertising and marketing to a mass market. So 
day to day, uh, I have a platform um, and I influence people somewhat in kind of the choices that they make. Um, so whether that be kind of things that they get up to or, or things that they buy um, or ways of thinking even. So, so yeah. what about clothes then? Because there is this idea that people will buy a piece of clothing, mm -hmm. wear it, once or twice yeah. and then either send it back or, or give it away yeah, I think there is definitely now much more of a, a throwaway culture with with fashion which is you know in my opinion such a shame um, but I think from from my perspective you know I have a responsibility to, to educate people on things like sustainability um, and that is a challenge because of course my job is essentially to promote brands and to wear clothes to influence people to buy them but it's kind of my my own message is to kind of yeah to share a whole range of of options so that people can then make their own educated choices but it's something you're aware of the, definitely the, the yes and i think i don't know if that's age or if it is just you know being more conscious myself so i have you know learned a lot more and kind of you know be more open to learning about these things but but... i found it quite a difficult concept to get my head around so yeah. so what is sustainable fashion i think from from a degree again uh from a consumer perspective it's just the the production of fashion that can actually have minimal impact upon polluting the environment as well as respected and being produced in an ethical way that we don't actually compromise upon both human rights you know resources and so on in principle in reality and i, and I really would value people's views upon that it's just it's not feasibly as yet to be a hundred percent sustainable but right. there are ways that we can help and make more educated choices in terms of reducing the impact that we have on both planet as well as the workers uh, i guess there's this image of sustainable fashion as being not very pretty uh, are you wearing some of your fashions today yes, I am. which I is am. very pretty yes, thank so thank you very much thank you but Based on that um, that very phrase that you said, um, that's actually the general public perception. And I've been working in the ethical, sustainable fashion sector for over 10 years, and really the conversation hasn't moved on. It's still regarded as unfashionable. It's still regarded as frumpy. The you know, despite the plethora of brands, even as Stella McCartney is like one of the leaders in uh, sustainability and promoting that aspect of fashion, but still uh, that that sort of idea of it not being fashionable is there. Sort of hessian sacks and yes, exactly. bits of exactly. cotton uncoloured. Yeah. Exactly. But then, you know, there are big brands that you would, you know, usually associate with fast fashion so H&M for example and even online retailers like Pretty Little Thing that are starting to come out with more sustainable options for people. Um, Is that because people are asking for them? I don't know if it's that or if they just feel like they are more responsible to do so now. Um, but yeah. it is uh, worrying, though, that the range of sustainable goods is just only, not even 5%. So it's just a token mechanism yeah. that retail and the high street are using to say we are sustainable. Yeah. You walk into a store, you really it's, it's difficult to find something that it is produced sustainably. And the rest of it is just You'd quite think frankly, this is something that really appeals to particularly young people. I mean, they're all about the environment, right? I mean, mm. isn't it a big marketing um, bonus, if you can say, my fashion is sustainable? absolutely remove the guilt factor from fashion shopping um, but as we say there's a lot of trade-offs there's no one perfect sustainable option there's no one perfect sustainable fiber if we look at natural fabrics we have the whole water pollution we have the pesticides and so on that go into growing the fiber if we look at synthetics they come from a barrel of oil we have the microfiber pollution aspect when they're then laundered in domestic washing machines so it's really very confusing for the average consumer to I mean, try I'm looking at what I'm wearing now and it's like it's cotton, it's polyester. It's probably the worst thing you could you could have for the environment. But are there alternatives that, that appeal to people? I think that people are wary of it because of the moralistic and the judgmental uh, tone of most sustainable fashion brands. And I think that if you sort of take customers on the journey and it is a, you're not going to go from uh, a fast fashion buyer to completely ethical and organic food shopping mm -hmm. and change that whole lifestyle overnight. It is a, it's a, it's a process and the demand should come from shareholders that, you know, it should be from from all the stakeholders in this because you know 
we all have to wear clothes, whether they're polyester, whether they're, I mean, polyester is really, uh, in, if you're into vegan fashion, that's one of the main fibres that they go for, you know, whereas actually, if, uh, you know, if you're into more organics, uh, if that's your, your thing, your tribe, then you'd want to have more cottons and silks. And you What know, is it that a fast fashion wearer is, is trying to portray with their, their image? Is it all about being cool? Yeah, I think that, and you know, now they're trying to emulate, you know, celebrities, other influencers. And um, when you know, so many young people are now fixated to their mobile phones, and not only are influencers showcasing, you know, like myself, you know, I'm, I'm more than guilty of this, showcasing new items that are on the high street that you know are fast fashion based, um, but also, you know advertisers themselves are able to reach mass markets via these platforms and sadly with with the money that they're potentially then saving on producing their clothes they have that budget to, to reach an audience that are willing to buy and invest in their clothing this is just our throwaway culture isn't yeah. it but it's fun <coughs> we have to remember you know there's people enjoy to wear new clothing people enjoy to try out different trends it's not really gonna you know hurt the bank balance so much it's less risk because it's so cheap and we can wear new things Is every that week. The key? It's, it's cheap. It's cheap. Yes, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the thing. And I think there's a great deal of pressure upon consumers these days to update their style, to update who they are on a daily basis. To do so in a cost effective way, you, you, you would be buying something on the high street. Mm -hmm. But that sort of cost effective way costs the environment a great deal of money. But and as I, you were saying, Dimitris, uh, that. H&M and companies like that, they, they pay token gestures to, mm -hmm. to ethical fashion and it's like a corporate social responsibility tick, like you said. But actually, like, I, I've shown with my fashion brands in my boutique that actually you can make it cheap and it can still be sustainable and ethical yeah. and you sure. can make it affordable. It's not that, I mean, hardly any of us can afford Stella McCartney, but I've shown that actually, you, you know, uh, my collections are more high street pricing, but they're all like committed to sustainability and ethics and fashion and reusing fabrics and you know um, stopping them from going to landfill or incineration and but the but the key is that you know uh, it's possible for H and M to make it one hundred percent sustainable. Why not? The will is not there really. You know. So and, and why isn't the will there? I mean, why why don't more don't big brands like get involved? On the yes. Market. Sorry, say that again. I think they might think that they will lose out on their target right. market. And the target market are yeah. people who, who, who want cheap yeah. uh, disposable clothing. Yeah. Oh, no, disposable is not the right word, but, but clothing has quickly changed yeah, and, and quick big turnaround. turnaround. But ultimately, yeah. it comes back to the message that sustainable fashion is not fashionable, it's not cool, things like that. That's, I'm working hard to change that. You know, yeah. I've. Uh, you know, but again, I'm not actually targeting like teenagers. Mm -hmm. uh, my customer is, you know, um, I'm targeting it like you know, slightly older than that. More um, should we not be targeting youngsters? I mean, they're going to be the fashion yeah. buyers of tomorrow. I'd say we, so. we, we should, but I think there's a room for everyone. There's room for the older consumer. There's room for the teenagers and so on. But I think the youth is just the future of this economy. They are the other people who are actually going to push on the agenda that they deserve to have fresh clothing that is fashionable, that is cool, but it doesn't have to cost both workers and the environment a great price. I think the technology that we do have at the moment, it doesn't allow us actually to produce the entire thing sustainably. And I think we have to be honest with it. But there are ways of, of, of being more sustainable in terms of buying, for instance, secondhand clothing. You know, there's so many retailers out there that they can offer that particular sort of option for people. And again, in terms of the cost perspective, we all feel that we don't spend enough money just because we buy a three or four pound T-shirt. In reality, when you add up all of that cost, you end up spending a lot more than actually purchasing one or two items that they will last for longer, they will actually be perceived to be modern and contemporary, and you will be able to have them as versatile items that you can wear for longer. So I think the overspending that we do on the high street is not actually being properly calculated. And at the end of the day, we spend a lot more on something that's actually never going to last or you're going to please us for more. The problem is changing people's mindsets into seeing that as, as uh, unacceptable because a lot, of, a lot of people say they want to buy sustainably, mm -hmm. but less than half do. And, and one of the issues is cost and yeah. one of the issues is 
you know, where does this place me in the cool factor? Am I going well, to I be that's belonging if I, I think do then that's that? The, that's a role for people like me to, you know, bring brands into into the spotlight almost. You yes, know? should influencers, should you definitely. be doing and, more? Yeah, I should, definitely. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it is definitely small changes. So for me, for example, you know, of course, I want to remain looking fashionable and buy into certain trends here and there where I can. But core products, I really try to, to work, you know, sustainably into my wardrobe. So, for example, things like T-shirts, I work with sustainable brands on things like that. Jeans, so staple core items, I'll try, you know, as hard as I can to make them sustainable. But this idea that Demetrius is saying, and, and I'm quite old-fashioned, I, I share that view. My, my mum would call it cost per wear. Yeah. You wear something, yeah, if you wear it, you know, buy yeah. something expensive, wear it again and again and again, um, and, and it, it's, it's made it worthwhile. Yeah. Clearly... That is not the market that, that you're looking yeah. at. Um, and we've talked about waste. In fact, in the UK alone, this figure that I came across, which I was really shocked by, 235 million pieces of clothing sent to landfill in spring of 2017. I mean, that's one season yeah, that's in true. one year, um, which is astonishing. So how do we how do we move away from that to encourage more big brands into producing clothing which can be worn more or you know Demetrius's idea of secondhand clothing do you yeah, think yeah I mean that is a massive thing right now so I actually went to an event last week that um, was held with a big influencer and the BBC who held uh, a clothes swapping um, you know uh, event with you know people took five items and then could leave with five items all very fashionable pieces and it's things like that that you know I think definitely bring awareness to, to you know, secondhand clothing and that it can still remain uh, fashionable but, but and trendy. again, ultimately, ultimately though, uh, the fashion companies that are on the high street, they're listed on the stock exchange, they have, they have to answer to their shareholders and they have, they're, they're money oriented, like, like almost everyone in the, in the, in the value chain in fashion. And so if you're, if you're only judging on uh, annual turnover and you're only judging success on, on those monetary benchmarks yeah. then you know you have to kind of the 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 incentive has to be there to to reduce like i can imagine that. for businesses secondhand clothing is a is a, is a nightmare exactly. and i imagine for fashion marketers <laughs> that concept is a nightmare as well but yeah. there's ways of making it more appealing isn't there in, if you look at the secondhand luxury or you know people don't really wear stuff very often nowadays before it then becomes secondhand so you can easily pick up brand new stuff in a charity shop you can pick up stuff that's been worn once it's well people don't go, they do go hunting from, in, in charity shops for vintage yeah. items, <coughs> how don't many you know secondhand websites now apps that are so convenient mm. for you to use on your phone that you know you can get alerts when certain brands come up and stuff like that so there are ways that you can uh, you know find items that you're looking for and, and I think to excuse me I think this is a critical moment because if we are being inspired by the food market which is normally how the trends would be operating you look what's happening in the food market and then we know how significant something is we're going through ethical food sustainably sourced food and so on and the way, the clever way that the food market did it in terms of introducing flexitarians, you don't have to be binary, you don't have to be a sustainable shopper or a non-sustainable shopper, yeah. you can actually combine your diet. So if we start educating consumers that, you know what, you don't have to have that high moral all my entire wardrobe yeah. is made out of sustainable and items. That's the key. That's the key, I think. Then we, I yeah. think we can easily start educating people without making them scared because it is a scary option for someone who is a teenager or a young consumer to actually say from now on, say no to the high street, say no to everyday options and retailers and just be sustainable. We can't do that. It's not realistic. No, it's not. It's not. You definitely have to get the younger generation on board because I know from my own teenager, it's very important what other... Yeah teenagers her peers think of the way she's dressing so I can imagine that some of these ideas would be quite a hard sell but if you get icons like Meghan Markle standing yeah. up and saying actually it's cool to be kind does that make a difference yes, definitely of course yeah yeah. yeah, it's about being more engaging, making it more fun, not preaching, but making mm. it exactly. more appealing, something that people want to do. Like, there's a great campaign in London called Love Not Landfill, and they're all about targeting very young consumers and encouraging them not to put clothing in the bin, but to bring it back into bins in store. They've partnered up with a really cool graffiti artist that have designed the bins. Mm -hmm. They've partnered up with um, influencers and charities so that influencers That's pick really out interesting. a nice outfit from the secondhand stuff, and they're showing consumers somebody relevant they can aspire to and showing that it can be fun and you don't have to do it every day.
And it is it's possible being to affect a groundswell of change because we had a you know very successful campaign uh, from a few years back about um, uh, um, weeding out sweatshop um, clothing yes. and, and and fair trade and paying playing a, a fair wage. Do you think that that kind of psychology um, could work with environmental when we talk about environmental impact of fast fashion? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And it has to be fun at the same time. I think when you say to someone, save the environment, be a better citizen, we all of us as consumers feel so tiny. How on earth, yeah. myself, a single consumer, would be able to make such a change when the big conglomerate high street labels don't do anything about it? However, if we do make it interactive, if we allow consumers to actually make it fun and allow them to understand that sustainability is something that we can all contribute to, you're not going to solve it, but it's going to be a part of your lifestyle, then we are more likely to make changes. And there are so many studies in psychology that we know that to make a significant change, to, to introduce change into your own behaviour, it has to be fun, it has to be interactive, and it has to have the support, as you mentioned earlier, of your peer group of people and friends and family. So when that sustainability becomes fun and interactive, then it's gonna start working. At the moment, there's a great sort of, you know, uh, sort of veil of morality, yes. uh, of right. being really and serious, guilt, yeah. and, yes. guilt and, and something that is actually has been pushed down our throats in, in a way that's actually quite evangelical. And I think yes. people don't change their minds like so. I, I, th I think that's a, that's a really good point. I mean, who should take the lead on this? Uh, should it be the big brands, individual designers? like yourself, yeah. uh, influencers like yourself, consumers like me. I mean, the nation of everyone really, isn't it? it really everyone is. needs to be responsible in, you know, even if it's in small ways, you know, for me, for example, it is promoting more sustainable brands when I can, you know, it's up to all partnering with people like Shazia yes. to, to promote her yeah. clothing. Because that's the thing is, is smaller brands maybe don't, don't have the opportunity to reach the mass market. So, you know, but, you know, um, it's just picking picking up on the uh, on the points that you made because in in my boutique, even though you know I've been dedicated to ethical sustainable fashion from when I first started, like I feel that that's a negative to be associated with it. So mm -hmm. I do that for me, and I tell yeah. customers if they're interested. Why do you think it's a because they because they because they. Uh, there's such a negative connotation with it that, oh, it's maybe not, you know, because it's a new brand, you know, it's not so well known. I don't have a millions of pounds of marketing budget, so people are insecure about their fashion choices. Yes, and so do you think the, the term ethical yes. fashion is, is seen negatively? Yes, I think so. That's really interesting, yeah. I, because I would have thought people would have looked twice at yeah. that. And I would have thought yeah. so too. I mean, it, if the yeah. clothing looks great, you know, and... Yes. You know, if it's in yeah. within, within a price bracket that works for a consumer, then I think that comes as a nice added bonus, really. Of course, should, you should would think do. that. You would think that, but it does, you know, and it is because of, you know, the, the constant, constant message drip flowing is that sustainable fashion is not coveted. Sustainable fashion is not cool. Mm. So you know, right so now, it's is not, sustainable yeah. fashion losing the battle? With fast fashion. I think so, yes. Exactly, yes. But I think things are changing now. I mean, that is Hopefully. an issue, isn't it? And we don't always yes. know what companies are doing because some companies yes. will choose not to shout about it. Yes. So, you know, what, what we see on the labels is only part of the story. There's lots of effort going on behind yes. the scenes, but companies are frightened to badge themselves in with that kind of um, ethical... Yeah. But are consumers it's, asking yeah, more questions it's about still, where clothes come it's from? It's still associated with hippies. Yeah. Mm. It's still associated, you know, like, I don't know, with Woodstock and God knows <laughs> what, you know. <laughs> you know, and we're, we're, we have to move away from that, but, uh, yeah. So how do we make the image of sustainable fashion match the image of fast fashion? Because there is a, a very particular image with being in that crowd, wearing something trendy, wearing something straight off the catwalk, and yeah. well, I think that's Chelsea hard to compete with. definitely onto something, you know, she's working with, with prints and trends and stuff that are, you know, fashionable at the so moment. I mean, so. why is your stuff ethical? What, what exactly about it makes it sustainable? Yeah, so um, I don't use, uh, the, the fabrics are new as such, but they're not, uh, they're not ordered new. So the base fabric is, um, I source the base fabrics from surplus supplies. I, uh, they're usually earmarked for landfill or for incineration because they're, they're surplus to whoever ordered it is surplus to their requirements. But I'm really hands-on involved in the whole design process from, from my drawing through to selecting the buttons and things, you know, I mean, I, I'm physically involved with those 
choices and those decisions. And uh, you know, so it's the uh, everything's manufactured in India. Um, so I live and work between London and India. But for me, it's important that I'm there throughout that whole duration. Right. So it's quite a commitment for me because I'm such a small company. But you know, I'm involved. I make you know making sure that who is making my clothes and uh, I mean that kind it. of commitment is yeah. amazing and, and presumably we have to see more of that kind of commitment to make eco-friendly brands more commonplace mm. yeah. it is wonderful but you can do it well if you're tiny can't you if yeah. you're part of a huge machine with a vast supply chain that you don't even know where the end of it is it's very difficult isn't it to be that hands-on mm. which is yes. really admirable but we have to put a break up on volume. I think that's one of the first key steps that we have to take. We can't produce sustainable fashion at the same speed as we do on the right. high street. Yeah. So I think one of the first steps is to actually really say to people, we don't need as much, which is the, the I very think fashion one. is addictive. It's an addiction, like a drug, and people feel that they need something every weekend, mm. that, you know, that, it, and they get, a, they get a high and, uh, and, and then that dips and they and need that, to go back to the shop. That is the problem. <laughs> uh, look, there's clearly a lot to talk about here and there's clearly a lot, to, uh, a long way to go in terms of getting sustainable fashion uh, more up there where it, it belongs. Um, guys, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Really great to have you on thank the you. show. And uh, you can see more about this debate and all our discussions on Roundtable on our YouTube channel. Just search for TRT World Roundtable. For now, from me and all the team here, bye-bye. And thank you for watching.